guys, welcome back to the garden. My name is Anna for those of you that are new. We are going to do a end of April garden tour. We've planted so many plants and we've done so many projects. I thought that it would be fair to give you guys a update on everything and how everything is looking and everything is growing. So I think we're going to start off in the front yard and then we'll head to the backyard. I tried to get out here when it wasn't so breezy but uh, I wanted to give you guys a look at everything in the late afternoon to show you how everything is growing and looking. And the front yard looks so beautiful. It looks so manicured and so beautiful and everything is filling in just lovely. This is one of the first projects that we did this spring, which were these no dig garden beds. I got a lot of questions about these garden beds, um, so I'm going to go and try and answer some of these things for you guys. Um, I got a lot of <laughs> um, comments saying, no dig, but there he is digging. Um, it'll never work. You know, we did it wrong, all of the things. And I specifically stated in that video that we are new to the no dig. So we may have done some things wrong, but it's working. <laughs> so, um, so far, so good. It's been a few weeks. Names. I've tagged everything um, just because I get a lot of neighbors that asked me what things are so I figured I might as well go ahead but these are the sweetheart white sun patients and the little lime hydrangea by proven winners and then the monkey grass so you can see that some of the grass is coming through on the edge and over on this side too. So we probably are going to have to do some sort of barrier here. We haven't had an issue with any kind of dirt flowing out yet um, with rain. That could still happen, but we haven't had an issue yet. So we haven't, you know, really felt like we needed to do that just yet. Um, but so far, so good with that. Now, as far as the monkey grass goes, there are two types. This is the variegated uh, monkey grass and there are two types there's clumping and then there's the kind that sun shoots and spreads and everybody is just so concerned <laughs> about this monkey grass you guys I do do some some research um, I do know some things about um, things in my garden <laughs> um, and this is the clumping monkey grass so this will get sorry for the wind this will get about um, well, it could get up to two feet tall, um, but the whole purpose behind this is to have this big, beautiful mound. The whole purpose behind the monkey grass is to have this beautiful mound behind this little lime and to continue to fill it in with, um, you know, annuals. And this year we chose the Sweetheart White Sun Patients. And so these are doing really well. They're holding up really well. We love them. We get a lot of compliments on them and um, you know wanted to give you guys an update you can see here there's a little bit of cardboard showing through on the corner that's okay we are okay with how it looks there is no um, I think the only thing we got was some dirt falling down here <laughs> into the little ravine um, which we will put more you know and it's not that big of a deal so um, in the meantime they look beautiful so that is the update on one of the very first projects that we did this spring. I haven't done anything with these. These were uh, pansies were planted last fall and they are still looking really pretty, but they're about to come out. This is where I do my, um, every year I do, well, it's only my second year, but my patriotic garden goes in here. And um, so these will be coming out soon, but they're beautiful right now. One of the first things that we planted here up front was the mix of pansies and violas in all purple. And they haven't performed like I thought they were going to perform. Um, they are getting bigger, but every night there's a Benny in here using it as a salad bar. <laughs> so he keeps eating on them. My plan is to um, plant this out um, with the different plants in between the pansies. So um, I will be doing that here coming up soon. Um, I just wished I would have gotten a better show with these. 
uh, you know, and they're still growing. They're I'm still fertilizing growing. them and watering them like I need to, and um, I just, I'm not happy. I, wa I wanted them to be a lot fuller like okay. last. If my memory is serving me correctly, this is the indigo girl um, salvia that I planted last year and it has come back and putting on so many blooms. She looks so pretty. This is a, um, I couldn't find the name of this, but this pinnacle, this is just a pinnacle hydrangea. There's two here. We planted them last year and they've come back with a vengeance and they're looking beautiful. My two azalea bushes are flushing back. They were looking really rough after winter. Um, I discussed with you guys that I'm gonna be doing a new uh, garden in the back. I might be transplanting these guys back there next season. We'll leave them here this season. I'm not sure, but um, they're flushing back. They're looking good. They gave me some blooms, but I don't think they're happy here. They look really sparse. They're just not as beautiful as some of the ones I've been seeing. So I think they're suffering a little bit. Um, I'm not sure, but they are getting new or new leaves and leaping out beautifully. But I don't know. They're just not as um, as beautiful as the one that I've seen in our area. So. Uh, I might be transplanting those. We have some of the little R variety, little giants R varieties here um, that I planted to those. Those are doing really well. We have some columbine in the back there and four of those. And black pearl heuchera. There's one here and there's one over here. And those have gotten so big since planting them. This one here is suffering. Um, I actually, all of my, I uh, came to the back on the porch to try and get out of the wind, but all of my coleus is not doing good. Um, none of it is growing. They're still the same size as they were, but I'm not giving up on them. They're a truly resilient plant. And I just feel like as soon as we start heating up, which is this week, is the week <laughs> that we are heating up. I feel like as soon as that happens and you know it starts to get warmer they're just going to do so well so i'm not giving up on them they they were little and puny and we've had a couple of really cold nights um since i planted them and i think that they suffered because of that so i'm just not giving up on them so right now the garden doesn't look super full but that's part of gardening is just being patient um, Ernie trimmed out our hollies last year and look at the growth they're putting on they're so pretty I, I love the look of new growth in a garden it just uh, I love it um, my hostas are all doing really good they've come back beautifully this is funny I have one over here that I planted and it's doing good because eventually I would like this to be my hosta garden anyways this one is doing really good my daylilies have gotten huge so they're doing really good overall I'm happy with the garden as it stands right now for still being in spring as soon as we warm up a lot of these plants are going to um, be happier so um, I'll give you a view from the front once more. These are the pots that we planted together. I made a boo-boo and I forgot to water. Um, so they got dehydrated one day. Uh, this one, they look like they're coming back. This one came back for sure. This one is struggling a tad, my bad. I just was so busy in the backyard and I just forgot about them. So um, I've been making it a point to come out here now that I got my new hose, it's so nice. Um, so much easier to water so I've been coming out and giving everybody a drink of water so they still look really good these begonias I planted one here and one over here and we had a um, 26 degree night and I think I showed you guys this one was um, I was able to revive it and it's blooming beautifully and putting on new growth you can see here so she's happy and this one 
has come back to. So very happy with these begonias and hopefully they will continue to grow and fill these pots in. I don't want to overcrowd them. Here is that other beautiful pot that we put together. This one is just doing lovely. I've got some new leaves growing on some of the plants and look at these blooms you guys. Oh they're gorgeous. They look so good. It's definitely a showstopper when you walk onto the front porch. These pots I planted off camera. They're doing really good. We have um, pansies, hookera, violas, and hellebore. And they do really well here. That's just a sweet little trio. Just a nice, welcoming, fresh look. And I love these pots. I get a lot of questions about my pots. I got these at, at home. And then Ernie planted these our varieties here and these pots when he repainted. I'm choosing to not underplant them right now. I may, I'm not sure. Put some impatience in there. We shall see. My day lilies are doing really well. The one that I transplanted, it, this one here was next to this one here. And so I moved it over here because I had a blank spot and it's the first one to put on blooms. This is my little daylily garden. Let me give you one more overview. It looks beautiful from here. It's just, I'm an impatient person, so I want everything to fill in, you know, better. <laughs> oh, the sedum. Let me talk to you about the sedum. So we had discussed a couple videos ago about the fertilizing of sedum and they get leggy. These have not been fertilized. I bought them. If you go back and watch the video, you'll see that these, I bought these very leggy already. They were already very leggy. So I just came through today and pinched off a bunch of the growth because they went to flower this here and I don't like the flowers. So I went and pulled a bunch of that off. I still need to do a little bit of work on that one. But this is what sedum looks like when it's over fertilized. It just gets leggy and I don't mind it but um, I see there's a bunch of growth coming in underneath and I want to help expose that. So I'll do a better job of cutting that back. Anyways, I think the garden looks really good as it stands right now through the end of April, right? We're good. These are all the bags that we have accumulated in one week. This is what we do. We fill the bags up, we put them out and a guy comes and picks them up. <laughs> he has like a big truck with an arm, picks them up, puts them in his truck. All right, let's head to the back. Okay, we'll start right here. Um, the entrance into the garden from the side yard. These are my Japanese privets. Look how much they have grown just in this season. Is that not amazing? Oh my gosh. We, oh bumblebee, you see that? Hi buddy. Oh, he left. We planted these for privacy because we have a neighbor right here and um, it's taking <laughs> too long for us for these to grow. I'm going to show you what Ernie's planning on doing to the patio when we're done with the garden tour. It's going to be beautiful. As we enter the garden, we enter the the Sun Valley Maple Gardens that we planted. This is one of the first things that I did in the backyard. And they're doing really good. This is why I like to overplant. I did not overplant these because I wanted to give them room, blah, blah, blah. But I don't like how sparse it looks. I do not like that at all. But it's okay because I do plan on coming in and planting some patients in here. So I'll be planting in all of the blank spots. <laughs> they look really good though. I do love all the color. We just recently planted Amanda and Via. Look how pretty these pink flowers are. In this pot, I've got so many buds coming up. She's so happy here. Oh my gosh. But look at these beautiful maples, you guys. Now these Sun Valley maples will get about um, 15 to 20 feet tall and um, 12 to 15 feet wide, I think. That is the first thing that we did. And then moving over here to our Sun Patient Hydrangea Gardens. I'm going to be removing these and using them in my patriotic garden because I can't take it. <laughs> I need pink. Um, so I'm going to be transplanting these when I do the patriotic garden up front and replacing them with pink. And um, hopefully they'll do okay in a transplant. They should. They're uh, pretty resilient plants. And then the Pinnacle Hydrangea here just growing massively. They're just getting bigger and bigger by the minute. 
just gorgeous. We have these boxwoods and I don't remember because when I planted these I didn't have a look at the tag or share the tag so I went back to go see what they were, what type of boxwoods for the life of me. Cannot cannot remember but this one that I bought them you know together identical next to each other. This one's a lot leggier than this one which is interesting but I think I'm going to trim them up to be more of like a formal um, statement at the entrance to the patio or garden whichever way you're going but I'm um, not sure what kind of boxwoods those are but very hardy they made it well through winter here's the other pinnacle hydrangea doing beautifully surrounded by the pink some patients and eventually we'll have a backdrop of white mandanvia we had red last year and or dark pink I can't remember the neighbor thought they were fake they do really well in the humidity and then we have our main garden over here a perennial grass here I'm not sure what kind of grass this is but we planted one here and one on the other side and they seem to be happy and doing well here's another indigo girl salvia doing beautifully she loves it here and then we have a um, hellebore back here that is much happier now that my um, magnolia sweet bay has leafed out she's getting a little bit more shade so she's much happier and then right next to that we have some columbine and the, this is the spring magic columbine beautiful plink pink florets. I love them. The flowers remind me of dancing ballerinas. <laughs> They're so pretty. And then here I have a very young um, one-year-old spilled wine Hueglia and has not bloomed yet but is looking really good and healthy and hopefully will bloom soon. And then we have the lamb's ear. This is the big ear lamb's ear. I have two of those planted looking really good and happy. This is a phlox. I do not remember what phlox this is but it's going to have pink or fuchsia flowers because I that's what I planted so we transplanted that from over on that side of the garden over here it did well during the transplant my pugster pinker butterfly bush is looking really good you guys very happy she is very happy I'm watering twice a day just so you guys know I want to keep everything really moist um, until Ernie gets the irrigation installed but I'm making sure that I'm keeping everything really happy um, until then because everything's new and I want to make sure that it you know mingles with the soil and you know creates it's a, a nice little home. We have the Hoopla Supertunias. I've got one here, one there, and one over there. These guys have doubled in size since I planted them, and they are looking good. They get about three feet wide by three feet tall, so they should fill in the spots. I want everything touching. So I'm hoping that's what I get. We shall see. We have the lemon coral sedum here. This is the one I planted. Fertilized once. They're light feeders. So once or twice a year is fine to give them food. We gave them food once and that's all we'll be doing. Look at what happened. All the little pieces that broke off <laughs> are coming out, which I'm totally fine with. Take over. I don't care. I love it. And then these here are my Strawberry Sunday Hydrangeas. They suffered last year. Nothing was getting enough water last year. I was negligent in my watering skills, and um, they could not handle the heat without being watered. They weren't getting enough water. So I'm hoping this year all my hydrangeas do good. I'm really hoping for that so we shall see um, because the blooms are gorgeous that these get and I'm excited <laughs> super excited Ernie transplanted the hollies back there one over here and then I'll show you the other one on the other side they're doing really good already getting new growth leafing out so they took the transplant really well and then we have the spring king mini salvias I planted three back here they're doing good super thirsty plants I I, I don't know if that's normal or if it's just my soil but they are super thirsty so I feel like they've got to get extra watering when I'm out here watering I really puddle them up but hoping they do well right here I have the rock and round pop star by proven winners I have one here and one over there and these are supposed to give me a beautiful show of pink so I'm very excited about that and anxiously waiting. I love the, I love adding the different variations just in this little, you know, picture here. You can see the different variations of greenery in the garden. I love that. I love when they're all, when they all eventually are touching and 
you know you have these different mounds of you know uh, greenery and flowers and it just makes my heart happy so um, I do think I have room for something right there though so <laughs> we shall see <laughs> these are three dwarf our variety the little giants I planted here in front these get two to three feet tall and I love um, they're just gonna be a nice base you can't tell but this slopes down a little bit right at where it starts to slope here is where I planted them because I know eventually this down here it's it's gonna all come together and make sense eventually so I'm planting for future if that makes any sense the Supertunia Bordeaux, Supertunia Royal Velvet, um, and the Hoopla should make a beautiful show in the garden. We're going to be mulching, and we're doing that as soon as Ernie's done with the irrigation. So that'll help too with water retention. Here's another rock and round over on this side and a salvia indio girl. I love these plants. They're proving to be one of my faves so far in the garden. And then we have the Peruvian lily. I have a purple one here and then two white ones here. I'm loving them. I might get another one for back there, but I'm really loving the plant. They are so lush for a full sun plant. If you are in a area where you want, you know, that really vibrant, lush look in your garden um, and you are in full sun, the Peruvian lily is, is oh my gosh, <laughs> a winner. Looking so good. We have another pot here with the perennial grass. Looking so good. I love the way this looks to me. This looks like a Cape Cod kind of area, a Cape Cod kind of garden. It's just really beautiful. Oh, it just gets me excited for everything to come. Here's the other holly that Ernie transplanted. He just gave it a haircut. And then here we have six double file um, of the viburnums, the double files, and they are just a beautiful, beautiful plant and doing really well here. They love it. They're already getting new growth, new leaves coming out on all of them. They're just happy here. The Veronica is doing really good leaping out beautifully. We have another one over here. The Ernie, I think, buried this one. Oh, he did. Okay, there you go, little guy. <laughs> and then we have the sentimental blue balloon flowers here. There's five of them. And then behind that, the Dianthus, which is lovely. I just love the way this garden looks. It's beautiful. And we are training this little shooter here into a main trunk of the crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtle. So we're going to keep an eye on that <laughs> and see how that goes, but that is the hopes is that we're able to get a third trunk on this tree. She's doing good. It's only been a couple days since I filmed this whole situation with this. And then my clematis, I still need to get Ernie really heavily mulched around the base, but I still need to get something planted there for um, her feet. But look at all the blooms that are coming through. Look at this, you guys. How beautiful is that? Oh, and there's so many more to come. I'm so excited. Just so excited. Look at this, this one. We'll put this one up here. You stay up here, little guy. Oh, so excited for this plant. Just excited. Looks beautiful. And then here is the other project that we just did. Ernie mulched around the, this was a job, <laughs> around the variety trees and, you know, merged them with the garden, if you will. It just merges them. You know, they just become a part of the garden as opposed to trees in the yard. It just makes me so happy. <laughs> just so happy this view it's beautiful we just planted these pots here supertunia um, bubblegum spike plant uh, I can't remember what those guys are called and an ivy Baltic ivy I believe and we repeated that over on this side how beautiful those are going to be just gorgeous. I just, I love all the views. <laughs> like even just this view right here, just beautiful. And then on my har varieties here in the back porch, I cleaned up the bottom and planted some beautiful impatience that look how happy they are. That they look so happy. Oh, 
in blush pink and dark pink because that is my theme this year, as you guys know. And then these beautiful Mandan Vias will just take over. I mean, they're doing really good. Look at the new growth coming in. Ernie keeps asking, when are they gonna climb? When are they gonna climb? And I said, they will. So they're just beautiful. We love them. And here is the other pot we have over here. Very excited to see these get just lush and big. Look at all the blooms and the new growth. Does that just make every gardener happy to see that? When you know your garden is happy, it just makes you happy, you know? It's such a lovely place. I didn't touch much on this tree. Um, I do get a lot of people saying that I planted it too close to the house. Um, these can be trained. They get about 20 feet tall and there's plenty of them in the neighborhood. Um, this is a Sweet Bay Magnolia multi-trunk. Um, so we're going to be, able, we planted it in perfect position to where we're going to be able to keep it nice and narrow and tall up against the house. That is the beauty of being a gardener and having trees. You can train them. <laughs> um, I would not have ever planted a traditional magnolia here, ever. Um, I planted what I knew I could plant here. So um, um, I get a lot of questions about our grass. Um, asking why does it look so good. Ernie uses the Scott's 3-in-1 twice a year and you know he does he had somebody come out last year and they um, they oh, they seeded it and all that kind of stuff so it's looking beautiful. We love our porch we really do we just we love it um, but I saw pretty on pretty in the pines she did this beautiful treatment on her front porch which is why I showed it to Ernie I said I wanted him to do it to front porch I'll put up a picture here to show you what it is and then he got excited <laughs> and said I'm gonna do that to the back porch too so he's going to be enclosing this here with lattice work this opening here with lattice work and this opening here with lattice work and what that's going to do is turn this into like a more of a fill of a room you know it's not going to keep the bugs out um, or anything we're doing as much as we can on a dime to beautify our property and turn our home into the cottage um, garden cottage look that we so love and that's just going to take it over the top once he does okay, that. Okay, so that is the garden tour um, for the end of April. Hopefully everything will grow in like I want it to. I want to get as much into the ground before the cicada <laughs> emerge. I've not ever experienced that, but they say once every 17 years or something. I don't know. It happens. and Or 70 years or something. Um, so I'm, I'm imagining cicadas are just going to be crawling out of the ground and I don't want to be gardening with them. They're big and ugly. So uh, <laughs> if you know anything about that whole situation, drop me a comment. Let me know what to expect. Uh, but I'm trying to get, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying my time in the garden. I'm enjoying, really enjoying creating this year. I'm just letting my creativity um, for me, I love decorating the interior of my home. That is something that brings me so much joy. But for me, creating a garden and planting the garden is equally as exciting. For me, I'm creating, I'm decorating my yard and that's what it feels like for me. And I really enjoy it. It's just so much fun to think and dream and um, create and plant and gardening is trial and error it's not you know foolproof I know that I said in my last video I want a foolproof garden well good luck Anna <laughs> those don't exist um, even the best of the best have issues in their garden you know there's just you you might be having a fabulous week and then boom something happens to a plant and you don't know why and you know stuff happens and that is you know it's forever changing I think and that is the beauty of gardening is that it is forever changing and I love spring here in the south I love that we get all four seasons because it is a true renewal um, 
of so many things, but a true renewal in the garden and um, and it just brings so much hope and joy. So I, I hope you guys are enjoying that along with me because it's giving me um, just so much joy to create the videos and to share it with you guys. And when you say you're learning from me or you're gonna try something or you know, you ask me a question and I'm able to answer, um, it makes me so happy because I feel like I'm part of something bigger. And um, that's what you want, right? To be part of something bigger than who you are and to be part of this community is just amazing. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's garden tour. I know that I don't have a huge property and I don't have a lot to show you right now, but what I do have is pretty special to me and I hope it is to you guys too. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.